This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's Alex Bennett. Yeah, it's the Ramble. We're going on from now until, well, until midnight tonight. And uh, we, we're so glad you're joining us. Uh, so stay with us. And in a little bit, we'll, we'll get together and have our citizens panel. And we'll uh, talk about how we hate Donald Trump a lot. And uh, then we'll grouse a lot about Donald Trump. And then uh, we'll figure out ways to impeach Donald Trump. It's, a, it's an all we hate Donald Trump show. Except, of course, for Phil, if he calls... He loves Donald Trump and would suck his dick if he had half the chance. But meanwhile, it's Wednesday, and guess who's here? The last time we were talking to our old friend, the Rube, Bob Rubin. Lighten he, up, everybody. The old Rube's here. Yeah, we were, we were talking, this was last week, we were talking about meetings in Hollywood and the kind of bullshit that goes on. So you oh. said... You you were telling us that you were in a meeting and you brought a woman dressed very efficiently and a guy as your bodyguard. Right, right. I, I, that, that, the Comedy Central for the uh, children's show that we talked about, the Ver Adventures in Verve Town. Yeah, uh, I was at Comedy Central, and uh, as I said before, when you go to the, any of these meetings, there's always a person you're talking to that doesn't know anything about anything, and you're wondering why am I even talking to this guy? But they always have an assistant with a yellow pad. And they're writing everything down before even th anything said. They sit down and they're scribbling like you're giving a deposition or something. I'm like, what are they writing? And I, I think it's just another form of, uh, of uh, intimidation, you know, to make you feel that you have no control whatsoever. And, uh, you know, and, and we're the idea people. So uh, go ahead and try. But uh, anyhow, so I went to a meeting at Comedy Central with my friend Elena dressed like you said, efficiently, like an uh, you know an office person, and my other friend uh, was dressed all in black, black t-shirt, black leather coat, a dark wraparound sunglasses, and he he had a a, a briefcase, a silver briefcase, and they're looking at him because he's kind of scary looking, and they're saying, "What's the deal with this guy?" And I go, "Oh, that's Mr. Uh, Summers. Mr. Summers always brings the dogs," and I go, "Mr. Summers, the dogs." And he puts his uh, <laughs> he puts a briefcase down, opens it up, and pulls out Nathan hot dogs and condiments for everybody there. Yeah. So now I got people relaxed. I got them eating hot dogs. Oh, and by the way, while this is going on, as soon as I started the meeting, Elena is writing shit down that even when stuff hasn't been said, and she's writing stuff down and flipping pages and writing stuff down and flipping pages, and. Uh, <clears throat> Throughout the meeting, I would refer to her, and uh, and uh, you know, and and I would refer to her, uh, whatever I I'd talk about celebrity guest cameos, and then I'd go, I go, Miss Fabri, who do we have lined up already? And she would say somebody no one's ever heard of, or I would say, I would say, Miss Fabri, when's my next meeting? While I'm pitching to these guys in the middle of the pitch, I'm like, Miss Fabri, what's when's my next meeting? And she go, Well, you got a four thirty at Coin Star, you know, and um, uh. So the uh, the people love the pitch. I even had a, like a Verve Town uh, sweatshirt. I just happened to have left over from when there was some Verve Town stuff made up. Yeah, and I, you know, I said there'll be there'll be a winner at the end of the pitch that gets this thing. And uh, so anyhow, the pitch lasted forty five minutes, and um, and and at the end of it, I was laying sp sprawled out completely sprawled out on the boardroom table laying laying on my back uh singing uh uh wichita lineman why i don't remember but anyhow i was there for 45 minutes and uh it went really well because i i put on a little show you know and uh yeah but then they never took the show and then uh when i called the one guy the one producer over there and he's like you know, he said, don't bug me. We won't have an answer for, you know, till next week. He goes, but just remember, you kept 40, you kept, you kept people there on a Friday afternoon for 45 minutes. So I think it went pretty well. And then, uh, they, and then they told me that the reason they passed on it was because it was too bizarre. 
And I was like, I thought you guys were Comedy Central. How could you pass on this because it's too bizarre, you know? Yeah, well, you know, uh, but that, again, here you have a company called Comedy Central. And yeah. who's heading up Comedy Central? A bunch of fucking morons. You know, yeah. who, who, you know, I, I, there was this show called, uh, uh, what was the show with, uh, it was, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, that uh, it ran over here and it was about two writers who come from England. And uh, they uh, are asked to take a series they had done in England and do it in America. So they come to America and now they go through all these mechanics just like you're talking about where they take the idea that was a success in England and they completely change it. They change it from a professor and his students to a gym teacher and his uh, his his basketball team. Wow. You know, things like that. And it's a very funny show. I'm trying to remember the name of the show. I, I you know, um the guy from uh from Friends was in it. Uh whose name now escapes me. I don't know. I'm losing it completely. But anyway, this show had, as one of the characters on the show, their head of comedy, and she always had a sour look on her face. That's funny. And she didn't laugh at anything, right? But she was the head of comedy. Right, right. And yeah. that's really how it goes. And that's really how it goes. I mean, this show uh, uh, seemed to just absolutely hate... Uh, <laughs> absolutely hate uh, uh, Hollywood. And I think anybody that's ever had to do anything with Hollywood can really get to hate it. The only people that love it are the talentless fucks who populate these companies. You yeah, know, and, absolutely. And, and, and they love Hollywood. They take their lunches. and they're... Somebody once said in Hollywood, they didn't think, the aver they, they estimated the average human being in Hollywood works uh, a total of one day a year. Yeah. Because they're always taking lunches and they're always out doing something else and they're always out doing something else and they're never doing their job. Well, I, you know, I, I've said that, uh, I've said that myself. I said that, I said, if you average it out, they probably work one or two days a year. Yeah. That, then the thing about it is it's set up to where, uh, uh, yeah. You, you could keep taking lunches left and right, going to meetings and going and, and, and taking care of your fancy car and stuff like that. And uh, the funny thing is, uh, if they worked, then they're closer to becoming fired. Because <laughs> they, they one little thing doesn't work out and they'll fire like five people. Yeah. They just dumped a lot of, they just dumped a lot of the people over at Comedy Central. Really? Oh, the name of that show, by the way, is Matt LeBlanc, who's a star, and it was Episodes. Oh, right, right. Was the show. and it, it, But they fired a whole bunch of people over at Comedy Central? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, this one dude, I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, I helped him back when I, remember when I did Saturday Night Special on Fox? Yeah. Uh, this one guy came to me and said, could you put in a good word for me? For, and I said, for what? And he goes, oh, I'm trying to get a job as a producer. I said, sure, no problem. Now, I put in the good word for him, but um, and he got the job, and I'm not saying that's why he got the job, but I did what he asked, you know, and uh, and he ended up working there, and then uh, he ended up doing something at HBO, and then he ended up at, at Comedy Central, and then he uh, was the co-creator and executive producer of a show called uh, At Midnight, which is on now. It's a game yeah. show yeah. for comedians, and they have three comedians on. Uh, for every show, and I, I, I sent him a note, you know, an email, and said, hey, how about let me do your show, and, and he never did. And anyhow, he's one of the guys... Did, he, did he ever get back to you? He did get back to me, but he kept making up bullshit excuses, and and, and he, he said, go, well, I gotta really let, I gotta really let the, the guy that books it, we're kind of letting him do his own thing, and I'm like, you're an executive producer, and you're co-creator. You can plug me right in. You have that kind of power. You can walk right into this guy and say, hey, I think I got a good bet for you. You know, and I not and not tell him to, that you're trying to do his job for him. You know? Yeah, but, you know, he uh, he got fired. So, <laughs> so. so maybe I, so he's not even around anymore, man. But uh, uh, I'm trying to think of it. Oh, it, the terrible part is, is that... Um, 
I've had a career full of people who could have hired me and got fired or they died. I had one guy, a couple of, about three years ago when I was still looking for work, I'm just, I'm just not looking for it anymore. Uh, uh, I There was a station in San Francisco that was going through some changes, and it turns out that the uh, the program director was the son of a guy who was my program director, WMCA, years and years and years earlier. And so uh, somebody, I think it was my friend Phil Meyer, got a hold of this guy because he was on a talking basis with him and said, hey, you know, Alex Bennett would love to talk to you. And he says, Alex, I remember Alex. Alex worked for my dad. I, I've always been a fan of Alex's career. Yeah, uh, have him get a hold of me. And so just as I'm about ready to get a hold of him, uh, it comes over the wires. The guy had a heart attack and dropped dead. Wow. So I said my career lately was just people dying or getting fired before I could get the job, you know. And I've had that happen on any number of occasions. Uh, I was supposed to be in at a thing called Air America when it first started. And right. I was one of the sure bets to get a, get a job there with the program director who was there. And just as they're about ready to give me the job, he gets fired. Oh, jeez. You know, this was the same guy that I was supposed to go to uh, uh, XM, which before yeah. it merged with Sirius, and, and I was going to be the head of, of, of uh, com the comedy radio station. Okay? And the yeah. guy who was supposed to hire me was the same guy that wanted to hire me for... Uh, for Air America, and that was earlier, and he got fired just about the time I was supposed to get the job. Wow. And the, the, the other thing happened to me, I was out of work in San Francisco, right? Got, was over, right? And so yeah. now I'm, lo I'm looking for work, and I find a job in Sacramento, California. They got a talk station up there, and it's kind of in, in my bailiwick because it's not a serious talk station. It's a kind of a comedy talk station. Yeah. And... Um, so uh, um, um, they, uh, I, they, they, they're saying, okay, we want you. Yeah, we want you on at, uh, oh, I don't know, like it was a two to six at, uh, during the day or something like that. And it's here in Sacramento, and I said, fine. And, you know, I was getting, planning on getting an apartment there just so I could live there on the weekdays to do the show. And um, uh, their, other, their team in the morning there was Opie and Anthony. And just as I'm about ready to sign the papers, right? Sign the papers for the job. Opie and Anthony pull this stunt where they send somebody into a church to do in the St. Patrick's Cathedral to fuck in the pews. Oh, jeez. And that became this big blowout, and they got fired from, you know. Uh, the, yeah. The, from the station in New York. Therefore, there was no show for them in in uh, Sacramento, and they said, well, the network, you know, CBS has said we have to take a different direction now. And so because these guys sent somebody into a pew in in in, in New York at St. Patrick's Cathedral to fuck in what was obviously a spate of really bad taste, yeah. I'm fucked out of a job. Right? So uh, this goes... Wait, you this get kind, out of a job. What? Or you could actually say you were pewed out of a job. I was pewed out of a job, or I was screwed in a pew without the, uh, something like that. Anyway, I mean, but these things go on all the time. That's why show business is such a frustrating profession. And I don't know how I've been. I mean, I'm, uh, now I'm a has been, but when I was a was, uh, I was pretty successful at it, and I was making good money. And I'm very lucky that that even happened to me because I could have spent a whole career like most other people getting mediocre pay, having mediocre success, yeah. you know. So I'm, I, I, don't, I, I can sit here and cry about what I don't have now and that I wish I had saved more money and didn't take everybody out to lunch, you know, and all of that. But really, when I look at the career as a whole, I can't cry about it. No, you can't. You know, but yet it is so maddening when these, these things that you have no control over start playing into your destiny. And I think that's what you face. I mean, you, you know, the thing is, yeah, I can look back on my career, which is now 35 years old, and I can cry. I could cry all day long. I think you could, I think you have a right to cry 
Because and, and, and the thing is this, man, that's kind of, I just, uh, here's a positive spin on that. You know, if I ever get an acting gig where I have to cry, you got to think about something that would make you cry. So I'll just, just th- even though I'm working at the time, <laughs> if I had a movie role, I'd just start thinking about my career and I'd start crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's terrible, you know, and it, 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 I've often felt it was terrible where you're concerned because you are very special as a comedian and you have very special, you have a strange ideas and, and it, your comedy comes from an area of, uh, how, how can I describe it? It's just bizarre, right? Yeah. But take my word for it. Somebody once told me something. I, he was like a salesman or something and uh, for a radio station. I can't remember what he was a salesman for. And I said, what is the hardest thing for you to sell? And he said, something that's never been done before. He said, you can always sell something that's been done before. It may yeah. fail, but you can sell it. Because people feel safe with something that's been done before. But if you bring something in the door that's never been done before... You, unless you really work your ass off, you're going to have a hard time selling that idea. That's true. You know? And uh, that's a sad, sad state of affairs if you think about it. Yeah, man, it sucks. You know? You'd because like. You these people that oh, they're just doing a job, man. I mean, they could go into the corporate world and do that same job. Yeah. Uh, but they're in a world where, uh, you know, you've got. Well, they're in a world where you you got people that are entertainers, man, and their and their minds are completely different, you know. And and then you got these business people, and the two shall never meet. Yes, in Hollywood, that's all they do is meet all day long and take lunches all day long. They they take dinners all night long, and and that's all they do is meet. But they're not connecting because you've got people that are only that, that have no creative ability whatsoever. Well, you know, I always say that uh, I, uh, for instance, Howard Stern has had a good career, but I wish I had in my life what Howard Stern had in his, and that was a Mel Karmazin, a guy who took him from NBC where he was always in battle, brought him over to his company, Infinity, and then let him do what he did and defend everything he did. If the FCC wanted to you know, find them for something Howard did. He would fight the fine, wow. and he would defend Howard. And he would—he literally was the man responsible for Howard's career. Howard uh, later turned on him, but he has to admit that he would have had no career without, you know, without. Uh, yeah, this is getting uh, lucky. In other words, at a precise point in his history where he was different and unusual, yeah. and he got fired for that. Somebody was there to pick him up who believed in him and had the power to push him ahead. And, and that's luck. And, yeah. that's luck and I wish I had had a Mel Karmazin in my life. Mel Karmazin <laughs> did come into my life, but later on, and I worked for him. But uh, I wish I had somebody like that, one person who'd say, come what may, we're going to make you a, we're going to make you a star. You know, yeah. and I never had anybody like that. Maybe I wasn't worthy of it. I don't know. But, you know, I never felt there was anybody there to catch me. Yeah, the thing is, uh, you got to get lucky for that to happen. Because um, for a guy that that really gets you and also is in a position of power, that's a very rare thing. Because most people in a position of power, they got there from never sticking their neck out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but But in the case of Mel, Mel was the kind of guy... Who and I? Uh, I turned down a job with Mel Karmazin once because I'd heard horrible things about him, and I was all wrong to feel that way. I mean, uh, he was—he's really a very principled person who, on top of everything else, loves talent. You know, he would yell and berate his salespeople. He would his general managers lived in fear of Mel Karmazin, but his talent loved him because he loved talent. Oh, you know, and he loved to 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 promulgate talent. And I, I uh, you know, um, I'm sorry I ever turned down that job with him because I was wrong. He, he, when I finally did wind up working for him at Sirius, uh, he was a he was a really a great guy and a great person to work for. And he, a talent was allowed to do what talent does. And, but you know, if if I had one person like that in my career, I probably would have been huge. 
But, yeah. you, you know, and if you have had one person like that in your career, you'd be huge. It's a matter of somebody who understands what you do implicitly and then believes in it enough to promote it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why I've never had it. I only once had an agent, and that was pathetic. Um, uh, I've never had an agent because I, I, I've never had anybody I felt believed in me enough to be my agent. Right. You know, yeah. if you're going to go sell me, then you better know what I do. I mean, the the guy that they sent me over to at uh, uh, at an agency here in New York a few years back, a uh, big agent, um, and he uh, he said to me, uh, "Gee, uh, could you uh, are you you're you're left wing with your politics?" I went, "Yeah." They said, "Can you be right wing?" Like it was a kind of thing anybody will do in order to get work. Right. And, and I went, no, I can't. And they said, why? And I said, because I couldn't wake up in the morning and look myself in the mirror if I was promulgating some bullshit. And he said, well, thanks for coming by. You know, if you can't if you can't do what I'm here to promote, forget it. You know, it would have been so much more wonderful. That guy went, you know, you're unusual. You're interesting. You're a left winger, but you're funny. Blah 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 blah. You run a fun show. You got some creative ideas. Let's see what we can do with you. No, no, I I didn't fit the. He was Glenn Beck's manager, by the way, you know. So, Glenn Beck, huh? Who's manager? Glenn Beck. I don't know if you're familiar with Glenn Beck. I know that name. He's he's a talk show host, and he, you know. Okay. He has his own little network and things like that. Well, I had a dude, man. I just when I first moved down to Hollywood, which was in 1934, I moved down here in 34. Geez, I've been here over 80 years now, but this one guy came up to me after a show I was doing at a club in West Hollywood, and uh, he goes, man, you're really terrific, man. Can I uh, can I buy you a drink? <laughs> yeah, you sure can. And uh, so then we talked, and I found out that he was Eddie Murphy's manager, and uh, and then uh, I, met, I met him at his office, and he had this office in Beverly Hills in this building that had its own restaurant. And, and next to him was uh, Rob Reiner's office, and next to that was Billy Crystal's office. So I'm thinking, it's pretty cool, you know. And uh, and uh, he actually helped me move from San Francisco to L.A., and then I'm thinking, oh, this will be great. Because, you know, he, he executive produced Eddie Murphy Raw. He executive produced all the yeah. uh, Beverly Hills Cops movies. But what had happened was <clears throat> when he got Eddie Murphy – he uh, he was co-owner of uh, either of of one of the comedy clubs in in New York, which I can't think of. And and Eddie Murphy used to do open mics there. And then he helped get Eddie Murphy some nightclub gigs. And Eddie Murphy was in Florida, and he gets a call from Saturday Night Live that they're looking for a black performer. And uh, he goes, "Oh, I got one for you." And um, Eddie Murphy uh, it was in Florida, and he flew him back up. And and Eddie Murphy did the audition for Saturday Night Live, and the rest is history. But because he did that for Eddie, Eddie's like, yeah, you, and he said, can I manage you? And he goes, yeah, of course. So he kind of lucked out. The guy lucked out. And um, so by the time I, but, you know, he, he said to me when I first met him, he goes, you know, I don't need the money. Right there, you should just walk away. <laughs> if somebody says, I don't need the money, yeah, yeah. then they're not going to fight for you, you know. And uh, uh, But he goes, I don't need the money, but before I retire, I want to take one person all the way again. Like Eddie, and I think you can do it. And uh, but the thing was, he never did anything. All I tell him what I wanted to get done, and he go okay. And then a week later, I go, hey, did you do that thing? And he goes, I sent a memo. I sent a memo. I'm like, oh my, that was his well, thing. What I happened sent- was he went from being hungry uh, to to being cavalier. Okay, you know, and and while you're sitting out there eating, Not- e- e- starving to death. Yeah. Uh, he's there going, uh, well, I'll, I'll make a call, see if they call back. Yeah, exactly. You, you know. He uh, wasn't browbeating these people like he's supposed to, you know. Well, that's why I think if, if you're a young kid coming up and some young agent who doesn't have anybody comes up to you and wants to work for you, tell them, okay, we'll do it on a, you know, we'll do it on a spec basis here and see what they do for you because the younger ones are the hungry ones and they're the ones that are going to, you know, you, one of those is going to work for you. You know, yeah. hey, listen. You know, we've run out of uh, out of time once again. Uh, uh, well, I, I tell you what. Next time I come on, remind me. I want I want to tell you some pitch meeting stories. I didn't get to them, but uh, you know, because and and the reason they were, you know, we're, we're over the top is because I 
I didn't want to go in there and just sit to some guy going, what's with all the, listen to some guy going, hey, what's with all the whiz pop, you know? Yeah, yeah, one of the whiz pop guys. We mentioned that. Did, was that last week we mentioned whiz yeah. pop that he said, I, that's enough whiz pop for me or something like that. Right, and we right. still don't know. And um, have you looked it up at all? Or maybe Wikipedia has it, whiz pop. Uh, I'll look it up. We'll see if we can find any reference to it yeah, in common yeah. literature. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, uh, Bob. Great talking to you once again, and we'll do it again uh, uh, probably, uh, um, I think, probably week after next, okay? All right, great talking to you. Now that we're done talking, I'm going to the John Bull. That's in San Francisco. All right, so I'll get there in six hours. Bye. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Well, everybody, it's time now to uh, uh, forget Bob Rubin for a couple of weeks and uh, get into uh, what's happening here in our lives here uh, on GabNet. And what we have going here, let me first let me turn on Skype here. I have to, I have to get Skype going. Uh, What's wrong with Skype? Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. And then I turn it on. See, you got to see me doing all this stuff. There we go. Now we're ready to go. Okay? All right? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, what happens is this is one of those uh, call-in shows, but it's different than any other kind of call-in show. In that, this program is a program where we put more than one person on the line at the same time, and it becomes kind of a group discussion, which is really fascinating and interesting and different and uh, it creates a whole different dynamic you know and you say well I, are the callers left or right how does that go on your show and the answer is uh, they aren't left and they aren't right they're all different stripes and the host happens to be uh yeah the, the host happens to be to the uh, to the to the left but that doesn't really matter does it so what you do is you get Skype and you call us on Skype and then you can be part of the citizens panel, which is a group of people I'll put on at the same time. Go to Skype.com. In fact, rather than me tell it to you, just go to Gabnet.net, Gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. And uh, then um, uh, look at all the information there on how you can call this program. There's even a phone number you can use, a normal, legitimate phone number so you don't have to use Skype and you don't have to have any technological uh, uh, savvy in order to pull it off, okay? Or pull what off, anyway. Uh, so anyway, we sit here now waiting for people to call. And let me tell you that we, we used to sit here and they all used to call bam, 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 like that. But not anymore. And there's a reason because sometimes we have what we call the curse of the first caller. And they always kind of get knocked off. Please call us. Don't worry about getting knocked off. All right? Okay? Okay? Let me see here. Ah, oh, what do you know? We dropped 14 frames since the show began. That's all. No big deal. So I'm just sitting here waiting for people to call, uh, and I would start talking about stuff. Well, here we go now. You see? Scott Boddicker is always great. He is terrific. And one of the things is Scott Boddicker always wants to be the first one to get kicked off. Let's see what <laughs> there I go. Let's see what happens. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, you're fine. Now Lee press on. Who's hey, there? Turn I'm on back. your Hi. turn on your camera. Uh, my camera's on. Oh, it should be. Well, turn it off and then turn it back on and see can what you happens. You see me, Alex? My yeah, camera can... says it's off. Well, I can see you. Okay, fine then. Your, ca right. your your camera's lying. Okay. You know, life is terrible when your camera lies to you. Yeah. 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 It's grayed out. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Well, I'm, I'm seeing you. No, it's, Lee, it's, uh, it's, have you tried that, turning your camera back I, on? There you the go. Back. There there we go. And then, uh, there we and go. then I'll go there back we to no. Logitech here. No, wait a minute. No, wait What's a, that? Wait, no, you had the camera there for a second. Okay, so FaceTime's not working today. So we're going to go back to this camera. Hi, folks. Wait a minute. you got to turn it on. <laughs> oh, is it not? Oh, geez, I went bad. Oh, there's a bad connection. Ha-ha. <laughs> I'll no. be right back. Okay, call us I right back. I recognize the voice. I who it is, but yeah, I yeah. think I recognize. Yeah, it's yeah. Lee Presson. He yeah. he was one, the band leader on my radio shows in San Francisco. 
Oh, was he? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hello, he doesn't Rob. Look that old. What? He's young looking. I know. Well, I mean, there were a lot of young people around me when I was old. Okay. Oh, okay. So. okay. Like now. Hello, Rob. Hey there, Alex. How are you? Hey, Scott. Are you going to turn on your camera? Uh, because, or are you in the dark again tonight? No, I, I, every day we get a little better. I've got light today. Yeah, today you've got light. Are you now? You're in the new place. Your temporary new apartment. The temporary place. Your temporary digs. How long are you going to be there for? Four months. Four months. Okay. Well, yeah. Do you like little it? Apartment. It's okay. It's a little apartment. Uh, you know, the air conditioner when it go, comes on sounds like. Um, the Mr. Softy ice, tea, ice truck, ice cream truck. Does it play a song? No, it doesn't play a song, but it's got the same, roar, you know, roar of the motor. Oh, really? When it's, when it's idling and you're, you know, that's what it reminds me of. It's loud. Let me see here. Here here comes Mr. Goodbar. There's Phil. Hello, I'm still Phil. I'm stuck in Iowa where it's freezing, man. It got up to 71 degrees. I'm like, I need my thermal underwear. 71 and you got, really? <laughs> I said at 61, 61. It's six, do you know something? It is exactly 61 degrees right now in New York City. I think it's like 50-something here in Virginia. Yeah. Oh, that's freezing. Phil, are you there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, what's cooking? And we'll turn your camera on. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you, the same deal as everybody else here. It's, it's what? off now. It's on now. I, I had to toggle yeah. it. Yeah, but where's Lee Press on? What happened to Lee? I, was, I want to talk to Lee as well. Not that you people are. Off. Wasn't he the first guy? Yeah. No, he, right. no, he was the second guy. Scott oh. was the first guy. He's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you may notice, it's a real casual show. You should go lie in bed, too. Everybody should lie oh, in yeah. bed Scott's tonight. laying down tonight. Got a pillow behind him. Are you taking after me here? Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll confess, I, I, I don't have any pants on. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't? Really, truthfully? sitting around in my gotkis. Uh, okay. Hello, Jeff. Good evening. Turn on your camera so we can see you. Let's see here. This is amazing because... Uh, there you go. I have go. to turn it off to turn it on. Yeah, it's I know. It's always on. I know. I know. Well, go, we get a hold of Skype and tell them they have a few problems with their program, but you can't get a hold of them. Yeah. There's nowhere to get a hold of Skype. We have put the, the, the task to this audience and to these people. How do you get a hold of the people at Skype? And there is no way to do it. Usually around the neck. They have like, you know, these user groups and, and you can go on to Skype to their user group and you can complain on that. Nobody ever gets back to you on that user group from Skype. Nobody cares. And my business manager today said, of course they don't care. It's free. <laughs> you know, what have you got to complain about? You know, I complain in this apartment. There was no gas, but we aren't paying any rent. So, you know, Everything like that who do I complain to? Yeah. You know? Well, you call, uh, you call uh, Con Ed and you tell him that, uh, you know, you're 77 years old and that, uh, you know, your health is being affected negatively by the fact that you don't have gas. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. See what yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, exactly. How is my life being affected by no gas? I. Uh, well. You. You, you know. Come up with something. Hi, That's hi, Patrick. Big money. No, I have. I have. I have. What do you call? I have. Uh, oh boy. Here. Oh no. This isn't going to work. Whoever's calling right now, you're trying to call in. Uh, I think it may be Lee. Uh, you're trying to call in using an old. Um, Thing. Wasn't that on the phone? Huh? Wasn't he on the phone? No. Oh no. Um, Lee, you've got to uh, you've got to call a fresh call. That means you go to Gabnet Live and call that number. If you try to call in on a previous group call, uh, that causes all kinds of problems. It makes me have to hang up on these people, and I don't want to do that. So, anyway. Um, so it, 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 we, we have, uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can get rid of the lead Soft press gun. on one. No. It's 61 here. Is it really? Yeah. It's oh, son of a bitch. Wait a minute. Let me go back here. Wait a minute. Where are we? Oh, there we are. Oh, that's the reason why we can't do that. Um, let me see here. Yeah, no, we're fine. Okay, well, uh, let's just, let me just quit trying to do something here. Lee, if you're listening to us and you're trying to sign on, don't go to the previous call you were on and try and sign on to it. Give us a call 
uh, how do we put it? Fresh. Out of the to get, here, here we go. Here he comes. He's okay. Hello, no, hello not. there, Lee. Are you there? Am I, am, I any, am I any better now? Who knows? Well, do you have a picture? Turn on your camera. Yes. Turn your camera. Is your camera on? According to, uh, on this end, my camera's on. Okay, turn it off. Toggle. Okay. Toggle it off. All right, and I'll then, turn my camera off. Boom. And, and then toggle it back on. Okay, now it's back on. There you go. See? Hey, that's what hey, happens. It, just because it's toggled on, now we have to wait for it to pop in, but it probably will <clears> eventually, so don't worry about it. Yeah, everybody okay. start going like this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whirl around yeah, and so on. Got, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Boy. Is tonight the night where we get to argue there about we go. how our careers we, never we took off? We can see you there. <laughs> that's, By the that's way, answering this call will put everybody on active hold. And I don't know who's trying to call using a former uh, uh, thing. Uh, somebody's using a former group and oh, trying to call. Me. I that, think that's the problem here. No, no, you didn't. But you really? did that maybe before. But now it's somebody else who was trying it. Oh, okay. You know. And I'm not going to put up with that. No. No. I don't run that kind of show here. Yeah. Anyway. That's the kind of guy you are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Patrick, I mean, I should do something with Patrick's picture here because I'm, I'm interrupting it a little bit. Whoops. No, no, we don't want that. Here, what do we want? We want this. I want to do this so that we can see a little more of Patrick at the, at a little less of me. Okay, there we go. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm getting this old. I'm learning how this thing works now. Anyway, uh, so how are you all this evening? Oh, swell. Yeah, how are you doing, Lee? Oh, everything's great here in California. We're yeah. doing fine. Yeah, how's... Sorry it took so long to get online, but all the technology here looks impressive, but it's at least seven or eight years old. Well, that microphone we love. It's, it, oh, it's the best-looking microphone we've had on this show. <laughs> uh, blue, uh, blue something? It's a blue, yes. It's it's a chrome blue. Why do they do them that way? I wonder. Uh, different to hundreds of different colors to suit your individual taste. Oh, I see. Is that what they say? Well, yeah, that's what they say at in, at at the Central Services showroom in Listen, the movie Brazil. I, I have a much. microphone here. Let me show you. This. Hold on a second. But they got blues in in blue, of course, and yeah. black and white and purple and orange, <coughs> and chrome. I have this microphone here. First, I'll show wow, it to the audience. It's a workhorse. Huh? It's an Electro Voice. It's right? an Electro Voice 635A. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Well, oh, wait a minute. Here voice. comes Ray Renati. Oh, hey. We haven't heard from Ray in a long time. Hello, Ray. Hey. How are hey, you? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, fine. Great. Uh, Tony, turn your camera off and on again, would oh. you? <laughs> Anyway, we're away from a full house. Uh, yeah, we're one away from a full house this early. What time is it? It's 1042. Anyway, this is a, 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 a 635A, okay? This is, I bought this microphone, ready? When I was 16 years old. And they still make this microphone yeah. today. Yeah, they do. Uh, and this microphone, if I plugged it in right now, still works. Okay? Oh, yeah. They, what, the important thing about this phone, uh, this microphone was, if you were a news reporter, it was the favorite of news reporters, and, and you were in a riot and somebody tried to hit you, you could hit them with this thing. <laughs> you know, you could do anything with this microphone. There's nothing that will break this fucking microphone. Nice. <laughs> you know, and I could, uh, uh, I could plug it in. I, haven't, I don't have an empty, I could do it and let you hear that it, it, it sounds fine. If you look at old Frank Sinatra specials, he yeah. uses the Electro Voice 635A. Very popular. Oh, yeah. When I bought this thing, it cost me, and I was a kid at the time, and it was back way back when, and it cost me $25. That was a lot of money in those days. And today it sells for about 150 But they still make the same mic after all these years. Sounds mm -hmm. great. And now what I was going to say about different colors, this thing kind of, if you look at it, it's kind of like, uh, uh, let me also show the audience because I use two different cameras, one for you guys and one for the audience. You can see it's kind of been all hacked up and everything. That's only because it used to be just silver, okay? And then I painted it for different things. Like when we were doing Midnight Blue, we painted it blue. 
and then we painted it gray for something else. And I've been painting it on and off all these years. I haven't done it in the last, you know, 10, 15 years. In fact, John Rockwell, if he's out there, knows this microphone because we <laughs> used it at Midnight Blue. And um, uh, it's my lucky mic. I've used it all my life, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, these mics sound better than this one does, although if I used it, it would sound pretty good. And I met, would imagine the new 635As are probably sound a little bit better. But I, I kept painting this. So whatever they say, oh, it comes in different colors. Hey, this comes in every color imaginable. All you have to do is get a spray can and, you know, boop, 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 you know. I, yeah. lo I love this mic. This is my, you know, I, when, I, when I die and I'm in a coffin, would, would you guys please tell somebody really to find really. this microphone and bury it with me? Uh, you assume that you're going to have a coffin. Oh, yeah. Last I heard, they're oh. burning you. <laughs> well, no, that's only if she goes first, if I go first. <laughs> if right. she goes first, you know, it's... it's that's no problem. We'll just drop the mic into the urn. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes John Rockwell just signed on. Do a mic drop. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to... Hey, yeah, right. yeah <laughs> the last mic drop into the urn. We'll yeah. Go. Hi, Ray yes. Renati. How hey. are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. I can't see everybody, though. I can't see you. I can't see Lee. I can't see some two other... I don't know if it's because of my... Uh, a VPN. Well, it. it could be. Do you, have a, do you have a VPN going there? Yeah, maybe I should turn it off and call yeah, back. Yeah. Well, wonder... There you are. Now you're there. Oh, okay. John Rockwell. Yeah. <laughs> I heard my name. Turn on your camera. Turn on your camera. Oh, I thought I had. It, well, everybody thinks they have time. their camera turned yeah, on, and they do, but it, oh. it's. Oh, it's a microphone. Oh. It, it's not working. But let's. Yeah, my let's... camera. My camera function button has disappeared every it's, so often. Right now it's, it's gone. Not, it's it gone. John, you yeah, know, let me, let me. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's another way to go. Can Sorry, you can you and, see and me? Well, well, wait a minute, John. It doesn't matter. Can you see me? Oh yeah. Do you remember this? <laughs> oh no, I saw it. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, definitely. Huh? You remember? That's the blue you, was the blue mic. I I, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we. I wouldn't have noticed. Now I can see where you know it was. It's got a blue tinge that probably well, wouldn't have had back. <laughs> well, no, it we uh, this has been repainted since then. Oh, well, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But we we painted it blue for Midnight Blue. Mm hmm And uh, it was silver when I first. Right. That's the standard Electro Voice silver yeah. sort of thing. And then uh, I have one like that. I have, yeah. a, I have the. I think it's the RE20, which has a little bit larger sort of uh, pop yeah. filter thing. On. I still have that from from my uh, my my old boss's uh, pro, uh, recording studio, and I'm using I'm using uh, microphones that we use all the time, uh, Shure SM81s, which are need a super like three three layers of foam. Otherwise, I'd be making all sorts. Of <laughs> So, yeah, but it works. But you know. it'd be nice if you could show it to us. But your camera is having problems. Oh, right that's now. right. I was just trying to. I'm thinking. Oh, if, if Tony's yeah. camera's not on, I don't think so. If Tony got off, and then John would get a camera, and then Tony could come back on without Tony a camera. Off? Yeah, why don't yeah. you hang up right now, I don't know. Tony? Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Now, does your does your camera come back there? Hasn't Give come some. back. Well, well oh, there it is. Th there it is. See? Okay. Well, now I'm off. Now I'm on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So now you can show us the microphone you were talking about. Tony could call okay. back in, but he wouldn't have a camera. He didn't have a camera anyway. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's the microphone you're talking yeah, about. It's, it's designed. It's designed oh, yeah. for. It's really more designed for um, uh, musical right. instruments. It's very tight. So you, you know, we yeah. use it with like three or four of them in a, in a studio in a circle so that you wouldn't hear the other people too well. But trying to do anything vocally, and it doesn't seem to be doing it now, but it used to be very, very, you know, the wind would just, whoo, you just, everything would pop. And so you use this, this really disgusting three or four levels of foam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but a uh, big condom, as we used to call it. Yeah. But the, nice. so that'll give that give you a little hint as to what yeah. just recorded in this. Uh, like this, in my, the, this, in my this is the microphone here. I use. People can see it. This is a uh, AKG, and I use oh, this yeah. because I like the way it makes. I like when I was using it at uh, at uh, when we were doing the TV show. Uh, it, mm -hmm. I had this mic, and and I was told it was mine that I had brought it to New York when I first went to work at my friend's office. And this was an old one that we had at, at, uh, at play. So I bought another one, uh, and I have two of them. And I, love the, I like the way it makes my voice sound. So, you know, but that's all that matters. I've never been that, have you ever been that fussy about what microphone you use, John? 
Not really, though. I if I if I'm doing a recording with four or five people, you know, or a couple people at once, it's good to have the same sort of microphone, so there really isn't a big difference in in sound quality between the people. Uh, but it's not that important. I work at a studio in Union off of Union Square that uh, they have a couple of AKGs mm -hmm. and they use them all the time. I always make sure that those are the ones that are on if I'm having two or three people because then it's consistent, you know. Yeah. But I've got mics. I got mics that I could use, you know, if I'm yeah. um, um, if I'm doing remote things, I could do it and all that, you mm -hmm. know, different ones. Uh, not a lot of mics, but. Yeah, well, I never, I never have been. I've now. never they been that particular. We bought these in the '80s. Yeah. I've never been that particular about what mic I use. Uh, although I know that uh, Howard Stern is a nut about that. He mm. uses compressors and he uses a certain kind of microphone. And if you ever listen to him, his his sound, he is com so compressed, it's like a guy with a bad facelift. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, hey Ray, we haven't yeah. seen you around here in a while. Yeah, well, yeah. I was directing a play and then I was acting. So it's all at night, so I have no, I couldn't come on. Yeah, is that all over with now? Or yeah. Oh, good, yeah. good, because yeah. we we like you being on here. Thanks. Yeah. I'm coming to New York uh, June second for a week. Really? So, yeah. You should, you should give me a call and we should uh, hook up if you have a chance. I mean, you don't have to. I I I always make it a policy never to tell people when I'm coming into town because then people want to see you and you spend most of your time trying to keep everybody happy rather than having a vacation. But if you want to get together, we will. Oh, yeah. that'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. If you go have a coffee or whatever. I'd, yeah. You know, I just go see some shows and my, my kid go, you know, go up to empire state building and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I've, have I, I've, have I ever been to the top of the empire state building? I don't think so. No, no. In fact, I used to drive by, by the empire state building Every morning when I was going home from WPLJ in New York, and I would yeah. pass the Empire State Building, and I didn't realize it for about two years that the, that the Empire, yeah. I was passing the Empire State Building because the only way from the ground you know it's the Empire State Building is if you go like this, you, look you know, up. crane yeah. your neck up. Yes, Jeff. Instead of going to that mm. huge, huge building, if you go yeah. to the Rock, which. Uh, is a couple of blocks away, you know, many blocks away. You get yeah, to see rock, yeah. everything in the city. It's oh, yeah, I, I know. I love that. Oh, you that. mean Rockefeller rock, Center? Rock Rockefeller Center. 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 I took some rock. great pictures yeah, I was, I was. from the top the last time I was there. I brought my tripod, and it was a clear day. That's, That's the place. Amazing. It's like Central Park's on one side, and the rest of the city is on the other. It's the best view, for sure. Well, have you, yeah. pe you people come out and looked at my site from time to time? I've had pictures up that I use, that I take from my window. And I have beautiful skyline of New York. I've got the Chrysler Building there. You can see the Empire State Building, you know. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so it's a, there's some great places to get great views in New York City. Hello, hey, Tony. Uh, How are you doing? Pretty good. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? No. I'm going to try the other computer because I don't see my camera. Well, uh, no, that that may not be your no. that may not be your uh, your fault. It may be the fault of Skype. Okay. Just can't can't take the overload. Okay. You know, so we'll have to look at your fucking dog. I don't know if it's really my dog. I'm not even getting that. No, what is is that your dog? What what did you say, no, John? I don't think it is. John, what did you say? I said I'm not even getting the picture of his dog. <laughs> oh really? He's, Where it he's says, not on here at all. Uh, uh, you, you don't you even. Not be, thank you, Skype. Uh, connected to him. Sometimes you gotta. Um, right. Just nobody move. Nobody move. Just no, no. stay where you are. I, I you know, <laughs> I don't want to have a whole show full of, oh, let's solve the Skype problem. No. You know? <laughs> can you see us, Lee? I can see all just fine. Well, most I of you. Rob, can, can you see fine. us all? Yeah. Yes. Jeff. I'm here. Tony. I can see you. Yeah. John. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Scott. Just I can see everybody but Tony. Okay, yeah. Phil. Yeah, I know we yeah, don't. I can see you, but I wouldn't want to be you. Yeah, and, and Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. I see everybody but Tony. And and Ray, can you see everybody? Everybody but Tony. Okay, yeah. so we're fine, and we don't have to see Tony because there's nothing you know much. What he looks like. There's, there's nothing, nothing much to nothing look at, him. you know. So. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hey, I just got a brand new mic. I love. Yeah. I, yeah, it's a Rode. I, I use it for my podcast today. This uh, Rode. Oh, it's, nice. It's great. I, I, I usually don't care about mics that much, but this thing, 
I sounded great on this thing. <laughs> uh, my mic's a road also. What's that? My mic is a road also. It's yeah. A, oh. It's a road uh, broadcaster. It's a road. Yeah. I, I have a road. Road kill. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, lo I, I love it. I love it. I was looking at roads, but, you know, half the problem when you look at microphones, yeah, they look great. Yeah. You know, but you don't know how they sound. I like I like the way Phil sounds, but is that just your raw sound, Phil? Or are you compressing it and doing all kinds of things? With uh, it? It's pretty much my raw sound. There's a little bit of compression. Uh, I have it turned the compressor turned on just a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, everything else is running pretty neutral. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not using mine. I'm just using this. But yeah, yeah. you know something? Those things are just fine. Well, oh, I, yeah. I tell you, if you really want to try a road, I have two of them, and I'll loan you one, and uh, you can see if you like it. I'll just send it in a box, and uh, you can try it. Okay. Uh, well, that was nice. Of him. That's, very, that's very nice of Phil, in spite of the fact that I think he's, he's a big creep. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to butter me up. Yeah, he's trying to butter me up. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll one. Here's my microphone, Alec. How do you like Donald Trump? <laughs> Here's a hey, microphone Phil, and a hundred million dollars for your daughter. <laughs> yeah. Phil, if you're coming down to uh, Palo Alto again, you can bring it here, and then I'll take it to Alex. <laughs> you could. It, it'd probably be just easier to put it in, a, you know, one yeah, of those, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those mailers. Yeah, yeah. It so. would be easier. Anyway. Yeah. Like, uh, you don't need to schlep, uh, you know. More no, 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 I was kidding. Yeah. So the uh, the big photo op today, the one that I think everybody here except maybe Phil loved, is the picture of the Trumps with the Pope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the Pope doesn't look very happy, and the two women look like they're going to his funeral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Did Melania came out as a Catholic today? What? Anya <laughs> yeah. came out and said oh, she's yeah. a Catholic. Oh, she's a Catholic this month. How nice. Yeah. And uh, Put you know, a hat on and everything. That she met with the Pope. And, uh, and the Pope but, said to her, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, you know, I, I was wondering, I've never been to the Vatican, but is there a wall around the Vatican? No. There's no? Gates more, I think. Fences and, fences and gates. But I don't fences know if it's a big, big wall, you know. Yeah, I'm sure right. Donald felt very comfortable there with all the gold gilt and all the stuff that's uh, it's right up his alley. Yeah, he thought it was his. Oh, yeah. He thought it was his place for a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I wonder if uh, Trump asked the Pope to kiss his ring. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. hey, <laughs> right. The Pope gave uh, uh, Trump a paper that he had written uh, about uh, climate change. And uh, Trump gave the Pope a whole bunch of gifts from, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the uh, black leader. Uh, Martin black, Luther King. Martin Luther King, right. And uh, What did he give him from Martin Luther King? What, 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 what black museum did he steal that out. from? I don't like it anymore. Get rid of it here. You can have it. <laughs> he, he gave him uh, a, a set of books, uh, and I, I'm not sure whether they were kings, or but King had <laughs> written them, and... Uh, oh, they were probably a I set of written, Ma Ma Martin Luther King books, and it, the Pope has probably read them all. Mm. Yeah, but these are in English. But actually, nobody in that photo except Trump looks happy. He's smiling. <clears throat> but the Pope <clears throat> looks throat> like, throat> well, the Pope looks like somebody in the room farted. That's really how he looks. Trump knows so how does to Trump, work. and oh, he's the guy who he did it. I haven't yeah. seen this. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't, wasn't Trump raised Catholic? I believe he was. Yeah. No. I'm not sure. He's Protestant, I think they said. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Presbyterian. Oh, yeah. Presbyterian. Oh, there, yeah. there is a picture of, uh, of Melania, uh, Donald Trump, and the Pope uh, talking to each other. And the caption they put on it was the Pope saying... Uh, I think in your case, divorce might be a good idea. <laughs> Annulment. Annulment? No. Yeah. I, I made one today of uh, Trump and the Pope shaking hands and Trump saying, why do you always wear that silly thing on your head? And the Pope says, I was just about to ask you oh, the same question. Oh, by question. the way. <laughs> <laughs> when Trump got off the plane today in Belgium, 
uh, he was on the tarmac and it was windy and his hair was actually lifting and I could see on the left hand side of his head uh, <laughs> six is, six six quite, yeah well it is quite receded uh, I was surprised that the hair didn't move around more than it did it lifted a, in unison you know <laughs> that, that is a problem on Trump's head and on Formula One race tracks. I watched it for a while, and then you can see <laughs> the cameraman went off of that shot, and I'm sure he was told to, to get <laughs> off that shot. You know, that it wasn't I wonder if Trump could just fly he's away. Around. He could be given like the flying nun. The flying nun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Phil, wouldn't Trump be better off to shaving the hair off? Uh, <laughs> no. You know, I mean, that's his look. Uh, and look. and he, he, he claimed it's his trademark. And, uh, uh, it's a pretty you know, ugly fucking trademark. I know. Well, you know, a lot of people have, uh, you know, weird looks. And, you know, that was his. But it, it looks it, messy, though, for a president. You know? well, it, I mean, it, we people who do comb-overs, we make fun of. You know? Yeah. And it's such an obvious comb-over. I mean, uh, it, and it, I, it, I just think that a person who has to worry about the way his hair is looking, I mean, if he, if he just went bald or something or yeah. just cut it short, it's people would admire him for doing it. Yes, Patrick? What? What? what Trump has a comb over is an insult to everybody that has a comb over. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it, it's a decision that I am just now beginning to have to wrestle with because I, my hairdo has been unchanged for basically 20 years, but now as it gets thinner, yeah, I have to get more imaginative. But you still have a lot of hair there. Oh, this is a miracle of modern engineering, Alex. I, really? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is pomade and hair dye and all kinds of cool stuff I got going on up here. I got to take down the scaffolding in the morning. Yeah, well, a girlfriend is the one who talked me into not coloring my beard anymore. You used to color the beard. And coloring my hair. Uh, I think one of the reasons she did it is she just didn't want me be, to be attractive to anybody else. But, you know, <laughs> uh, but no, I saw that's why I'm, I'm I, I, I've been gray now for, well, ever since I knew her. You know, he, she claimed that my hair, the, the color was kind of wrong and it was going orange. <laughs> oh my God, that's like a Trump thing. That's yeah. what happened. I mean, Ray, you you're you're gray. Did you ever yeah. try to color it when it was starting to I, get I gray? I used to color it for years, uh, so I could get parts for younger men. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it gets orange. It gets like tricolored. You, know, you got yeah. orange. Oh, right. and you have to keep doing it, or you have a three three colored sort of head going yeah. on. And then your head itches like crazy from that uh, stuff yeah. too. Yeah, it's it's used to it. Did you? I'm an old goth. I've been doing it since I was 14. Wow. You've been gray. So have you had gray hair since then? No, no, I just dye it. Oh, look. But I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll tell you, the enough. way you've done your hair, the color you've done your hair, along with the mustache and everything, is part of your style. Exactly. You yes. know, it's kind of got a. Like you you want to evoke what a, a 30s or 40s style? I'm trying to look like a human cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How am I doing? Works for Trump. You know, you I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm I'm so glad that we... So I, can't get really, I can't get mad at Trump when he does that shit to his hair because I'm doing the same shit. I'm so glad we now have video. I'm just yeah. better at it than he is. Now, here is the other uh, statement today that it was just amazing. Uh, it is reported that on uh, the 29th of last month, uh, the president was speaking with the prime minister of the Philippines. Is that what they have there, Rob, as the prime minister? Yeah, president, the president, president. president of the Philippines, and the chief uh, despot, huh? Chief despot, the chief yeah. despot. Yeah, yeah. And um, he told him, and, and I don't know why he does this. You know, I, you know, we don't need spies in the United States. All you have to do is ask Trump. Mm -hmm. He'll give you. He gives up the secrets, and he's not even being tortured. You know. <laughs> Uh, he told the head of he uh, us. Uh, the Philippines, <laughs> hey, by the way, we have some secret submarines off the coast of North Korea. Just wanted you to know. <laughs> now, to begin with, the reason they're submarines is so you don't see them. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so it isn't necessarily a good idea to say you've got them or where see, they oh, are. An idiot. You know, <laughs> what a fucking idiot. Yes, you're going to defend him, Phil. Go ahead. Of course ahead. he is. All right. Oh, God. Not oh, God. 
the, the deal <laughs> is. is but, by the way, if you have to take a piss, take it now. Uh, yes. The story was leaked. The transcripts. Take a peek. A pee, the, rather. The transcripts were leaked. Uh, by uh, some uh, some people. It doesn't in the matter. House. Doesn't matter. Right. What so matters what? So is, is that he said it he, at all. Look, uh, the Philippines are in uh, harm's way of the North Koreans, and Trump telling uh, giving this information to Duarte is not is is giving information to an ally, and yeah, and if an, ally information... in, an ally who has been in Moscow. Well, they have submarines too. He is the but biggest. Means, uh, he is the biggest security leak we have. No, uh, the security leaks, and those guys are going to get fired. There's some people. There's. Uh, they said there's three people in the White they're House. Patriots. Yeah, they're patriots. Well, they're going to be unemployed patriots pretty soon, and I hope they get arrested for. Some leaking of the best patriots are unemployed. Yeah, I hope they get arrested for leaking confidential information. Mm -hmm. Doing the right they're, thing. They're not patriots. They're traitors. No, no, they're not. They're heroes. They're, they're heroes. Traitor. They should be given a medal. Yes, Patrick. Traitor. I, I mean, I don't know any of this for certain, but I would imagine that FDR and Churchill, they were tight. And between the two of them, they were probably the only one that knew secrets about the others and where troops were and that. And Stalin was sort of the odd man out, even though he was part of the Allies during World War II. And there was a reason for that, because you couldn't trust him. I mean, he was on our side, but you wanted to keep him at arm's length. Um, we seem to not have any of that with Trump that it's like anybody who says they like the United States, we tell them everything. And that's not really the best way to do it. I mean, like I said, you look back to World War II and it was FDR and Churchill. You couldn't have gotten a closer alliance than those two. And that's what you want. Those are the people you want to share information with, not with the Russians, you know, even though they were allies. And I just... I. I look at this with Trump and the different information he's giving that, you know, I mean, yeah, the Philippines are allied, but they're not that fucking close to us. You not know, anymore they're not. They were pretty close. And not anymore they could they're be not. Again. And strategically, it's important. And uh, by the way, for, uh, Rob uh, knows a lot about the Philippines. Philippines. So do I. I'm married to a Filipino or I'm engaged to one. You've been engaged? I'm only engaged. It doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't We've count. We've been together 11 years. <laughs> she doesn't think it's an engagement. <laughs> uh, by the way, if, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Brian is calling. Uh, Brian, we have a full house here. We can't, we can't take another call. Otherwise, everybody else will freeze and... There we go. There's Brian again. Uh, no, Brian. Put us on hold and go over to him and let him know. Oh, 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 okay. I'm going to try this. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go to him. Uh, let me see. Let me answer him. Here we go. Hello, Brian. We can't take your call tonight because we're full up. We have a full house. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks a lot. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, is everybody else there? Let me put you resume call. There we go. Oh, that was I had to tell him. I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah. You know. Now that'll teach you not to call early. <laughs> uh, uh, the fact is that that you know, I think that what he did was inappropriate. I don't think it, what have we lost somebody? No, Ray's camera's off. Uh, oh, Ray's ca my camera's no, off? No, his camera's on. No, oh, it is? We yeah. lost okay, somebody. I, I don't have... We lost somebody. Who do we lose? Well, I see nine people. Oh, wait a minute. No. There's John. Wait yes. a minute. Oh, well, there's, there's eight. There's of nine. Of but you need it. We, we need one more. Oh, did Scott get Scott's off? off. Scott yeah, went, got off. off. Okay, well, Brian, if you want to call, there's a space now. <laughs> okay, Brian? Scott said he was going off. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 Brian, if you want to call, uh, there's a there's a space open at the table here, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, um, um, you know, I, I, it, there's just something about this president who feels compelled to act important and to tell people secrets. 
This is and ridiculous. He doesn't realize that he's going to he's going to wind. He's ruining the reputation of this country because he decides because he's the grand high exalted mystic ruler or whomever. He could just decide at at a moment's notice to just declassify something or give somebody information without thinking of the consequences uh, uh, of yeah, it. And let me add to that. And then uh, Patrick has his hand up. Uh, let me add to that. Here's the great danger, Phil, is that other people. Will stop giving him secrets. Exactly. Other countries will quit supplying him with information because they're afraid it will get leaked by exactly. Donald Trump. Yes, Patrick. Now that was that was a little bit what I was going to say. Number one, he does have the right to declassify whatever the hell he wants because of being president. But with that, there is some responsibility as to what you're declassifying, and part of that is, as Alex said. You're going to have uh, different allies that are not going to give us information specifically because they don't, they don't feel that it would be safe. And the other thing is, if we know that there are leakers in the White House, and I don't mean leakers as in idiots, even though we do have that, um, but if you've got people leaking information, um, why would you give them more fuel uh, that doesn't make any sense. If I was Trump at this point, I would be buttoned up and not saying a word and feeding false information uh, mm -hmm. to see who the leak were, not giving actual information. Do you think this whole act, idea of him giving information like this to the Philippine president is, his, is, is an ego thing on his part? That's saying, definitely. look, I know this stuff. Oh, see, I I'm... Patrick you, may have you, you don't think so, Patrick? No, I think, I, I think he just... I, I don't think he has a grasp on the magnitude of his position and the position of the United States in the world. I really believe that. I don't think it had anything to do with ego. I think it has to do with a lack of understanding. And, you know, the other night, or maybe it was last night, you were talking about um, him mentioning uh, Dash, which is ISIS, calling them losers. And you had mentioned, Alec, that you you didn't think it was a good thing because he was, like, taunting them. And I would disagree with you on this in that who gives a shit because they don't give a shit anyway. They're going to come after anybody regardless if they're taunted or not. The problem I had is the term loser is a kid on the playground term. He should have said they were barbaric and described what they did. Not they're losers, but that what they did was <clears throat> He yeah. does not have that foresight. And it's just off the cuff and just... He doesn't well, but it. you see, when you call somebody a loser, it's like I said last night, you're asking them to knock the, ch the, the ch piece of wood off your shoulder, okay? And um, uh, that, that, that puts us in kind of not a very good position when he does that sort of thing. The fact is, if you call them barbaric, you're, you're talking about them in a very realistic sense, okay? By the way, Rob's got his hand up first. Uh, I, think, I think uh, he, he speaks that way because it's what got him elected. He's talking like the guy in the bar talks, and that's what's that's that's who Donald Trump is. But I think he's he continues that because his base likes to hear that. You know, oh, he called the, he called the Comey a nut job. Same kind of thing. Yeah, you know, that's something I would do and say, "Oh, you're a nut job," but yes. you're not the fucking president of the United States. Yeah. Yes, he Phil. He want to glorify uh, these people, and he felt that that's what was happening. No, 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 Phil, Phil you're putting too much thought into that. No, 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 he, because he specifically no, no. said. You're trying, you're trying to install brains into a brainless yeah, person. And, and, and also, the, the, the term loser, I, I see what he's referring to. Of course you, see, you do. Uh, many of these uh, uh, converts to ISIS, especially ones that are either American or, or British uh, and, and were born there, even though this guy... Guy, uh, did just get back from Libya and he fought there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, these these people are disenfranchised. They are the losers of society. They have nothing going. So, for what do you them. do with disenfranchised people, Phil? 
They join ISIS? No. What do you do to get them to not join ISIS? Yeah. You can't, you can't help some oh, of these oh, people. Oh, oh, you can't help them? Maybe you can franchise no, them. Maybe you can give them some investment in the world around yeah. them. Their investment is 72 virgins. You see, and you, uh, uh, you, you know, you're being very racist with a comment way, like that, Phil. There's a long way from disenfranchised to 72 virgins. Uh, okay. You know, you, there's a long way that you can react with these people and, and fix the problems. You can't fix these people. Uh, may, uh, no, you can't, and Trump can't, but there are some people in this world who might be able to. Yes, uh, Jeff, you had your yeah. hand up, and then Patrick has his hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think about Trump. He's a guy who really wanted to be in charge of wrestling on TV. Not necessarily as a wrestler, but as as the guy who would oh, uh, irritate everybody and, and get everybody uh, irritating each other. I got one. And I think he's he, he unfortunately... Didn't get to do the job that he really would like to do. So, president is number two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah Lee? Uh, Trump doesn't care about policy. He doesn't care about the presidency. What he cares about is the news cycle. He cares about what looks good on camera. It all goes back to that Pope picture. He's smiling because there's a camera in the room. Everyone else is not smiling because of what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. He, he Inter just, he, interestingly he, enough. Oh, yes. Uh, did, wait a minute. Ray, did you have your hand up? Uh, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I just wanted to say to Phil, I mean, Phil, you put a lot of thought into the word loser, and I, I thought that was really good. But I can guarantee you Donald Trump didn't put that much thought into why he used the word loser. Right. So I don't know. You I think I, he I did? See that. Yeah, I think he did. Really? Uh, okay. And, yeah. and he's I, also, you know, he doesn't want to glorify these people. He wants to tear them down. He wants to dismiss them as 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 the worst of the worst. Yeah, but, but you're not you're not dismissing them by calling them a loser. That's a term you use in the playground. You you dismiss them more so when you call them barbaric, when you call them uh, inhuman, and things like that. But not when you call them a loser and somebody else a nut job. You know. you're, you're actually complimenting them in their in their mind. Oh, because they Phil, think Phil, for once, I would love to hear you say this president is kind of coming off his wheels. Yes. Patrick, yes. you have oh. your hand up. Um, as far as uh, not glorifying them, the biggest problem I have with nearly everybody, uh, even on this panel, um, is we call them ISIS or ISIL. They don't have a state. They don't have a fucking government. We should use the term that they use in Europe, which is dash. And it's an insultive term that dismisses them altogether. By calling them ISIS, we're legitimizing them, and ISIL and legitimizing them, or the Levant or whatever. It, it, yeah, they don't, they don't like being called. Uh, uh, it, dash is a term you use. I think it's, it, it's something Dash. close to that. Huh? Dash. They you know, something I, like that, but I anyway, they a, don't like being called that. They hate I, being called that. I had a Hungarian girlfriend, and the word a dash meant sweet in Hungarian, and I used to call her Dash. <laughs> so. Well, the the Kardashians have stores called Dash too, but the, yeah. it, it has nothing. To do, but, but but Patrick says absolutely so. correct. They don't like the term Dash. But that, don't they have that, Libya? That's where you dismiss them, and by not legitimizing them. And the other thing I will say, what Phil said earlier, as far as you can help so many people, that's very true. Because uh, it's the same as gangs in uh, many inner cities or uh, even out in the suburbs, that kids that join gang, they're joining it because they're looking for some sort of uh, legitimizing uh, force of their beliefs and, and that, that they're not getting elsewhere. Yeah. And you can build all the basketball courts and all of the football fields and all of that if these kids want to do it they're going to do it period so you know i mean isis dash they are going to attract people like that the same as the crypts and the blood yeah well anybody else have a comment on that every religion has their share of bozos and uh uh Day 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 Yerush is very much like the the Ku Klux Klan of Islam. Everybody's got a small core group of crazies. Well, small. I think it's a, they're about twenty percent of uh, of Islam. 
I think yeah, they're less than that. Yeah, 20% of the Christians are crazy. 20% of everyone are idiots. Yeah, but there's what? One, how many, uh, how many uh, uh, Muslims are there in the world? Is, is it 1.8 billion? It's the fastest growing religion. I know that. Uh, so if yeah. you take 20% yeah. of 1.8 billion, that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. When did it first come into being? 800 years ago. No. Oh. See, you don't even know what the history of Islam. Muslim? Uh, Mohammed was, uh, oh, 800. Was the year 800 or it was 800 no. years ago? No, no. Try, try 610. A big deal. And, and, and Mohammed wrote the last surah in, uh, I think, uh, eight, uh, six, 640, and then he died. Yes, uh, Rob. I'd say Trump in the Middle East, remember? Huh? So do remember Trump in the Middle East, Alex? He landed in Israel. What did you yeah. say? <laughs> he was in the Middle East, and he did come from the Middle East. No, he didn't know where he was. Remember? He, uh, that's not true. He thought he had left the Middle East. That's the way he said it. Huh? Phil, <laughs> Phil, I, Phil. I, I, you know, it, you know. Every day, story. every day, every day that you defend this guy. Even on stuff in which you could say, well, you know, he's a little off base on that one. You become looking more like an idiot. Look, he, he, might bomb he the was country. in the Middle East and, and he had a historic flight, the first flight from Saudi Arabia to Israel. Oh, gee. Do you, you think that's the first flight that ever went from Saudi Arabia to Israel? Directly from Saudi Arabia to Israel. That's, that was the first flight. It's, it's historic. And It's uh, historic because he took a plane that is not a scheduled airline and went from one place to another? Yes. Uh, it's historic? Yes, it's. it's there's I nothing. I he didn't finish the joke. What? It's supposed to be. I just flew in from the Middle East, and boy, are my arms tired. That's yeah, something the way like the joke that. Goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he didn't Bottom finish book. the joke. Well, so what do you think the Pope said when Trump left? Do you think today, like, thank God he's out of here? He must have said something. I, I'm sure he did not look happy. Don't by the way, by the way, do you have a camera yet, Aunt Tony? Yeah. Do you have a camera on your? Yeah, but it's not on. So. Well, turn it on. Oh, no, I don't see. It. It's not coming up on my screen. You said. Oh, uh, okay. I thought it might come up when. Uh, oh yeah, when, no, I was looking when Scott way. left. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I just, uh, I, I just think that uh, that uh, you know, this is our worst nightmare, and it's, it's. You watch what's going to happen in the fall, Phil, when the fall elections happen around the country. Uh, Republicans are going to take a big hit. Big hit. Oh. Hey, that's what they said uh, on this last election. He, they, uh, it was and, over for the and, Republican and, and Party. And they were absolutely right. The Republican Party did not win the last election. They won the Electoral College. Rob? That is the election. Well, and speaking of the midterm elections coming up, uh, the, the other big news story of the day is that the Congressional Budget Office finally came yes, out with the, the rating. C, C, uh, CBO. Yeah, twenty three. It'll leave twenty three million fewer Americans with health care by twenty twenty six than there only than under Obamacare. There are only nine million that I believe signed up for on Obamacare at this point. So where's the twenty three million coming from? And that's that that figure is from Trent Gowdy. This is the, this is coming from a nonpartisan committee, the Congressional uh, Budget Committee. Yes, but that that is uh, uh, projecting it out a uh, decade in the future. Yes, but still, that means 23 well, million Americans will be well, without health care. But it's not taking into consideration. I don't give a shit. It means 23 million people aren't going to have health care, Phil. Uh, because you of can, Obamacare uh, uh, being uh, eliminated. Uh, but there's going to be another thing in place. Oh, yeah. I, I want to wait and when? see that one. What is that? Well, yeah, have you seen it yet? Have you seen it? Percentage. When, what is and, that? And you know, there's a lot of people that didn't want health care. And you know that there are a lot of the Republicans are considering funding, keeping continuing to fund Obamacare. Yeah, because they're worried. Do you know that the, the, they better be worried too? Uh, well. Nothing will happen. What do you mean? You, you keep your excuse for bad behavior is nothing will happen. He's just I, proposing I think, this. It's never going to happen. I, I think there's always some shift in, okay. in the House and in the yeah. Senate in yeah. the midterm yeah. elections. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, going to be okay. business well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Ray, you've been thinking about what we're talking about at all? Yeah, I've been sitting here listening and thinking about it. I, I think that... Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I know that a lot of the Republicans aren't in favor of what Trump's trying to do, and so he's going to have a real hard time getting anything to pass. Uh, they'd never say it publicly, but um, a lot of them you are know, not happy about anything that he's you, doing. You know, let's say I come over to your house, 
and I go, I'd really like to fuck your wife. And is your right. answer going to be like Phil's answer? Uh, that, well, it's not going to happen. And, and, or are you going to slug me? You know, the fact is, I had the thought in my head. And if, yeah. if, if Trump has a thought in his head that he can kick out Medicare and he can kick out Medicaid and he can get rid of Obamacare, make sure that people aren't insured and he get rid of the arts and all of that, hey, the fact that he can't get it done is, isn't anything. The fact that our president is thinking he can do this. And yes. he ran on a completely a, com a complete opposite uh, platform. Well, yeah. He wasn't going to go after entitlements. He wasn't. He, it was going to be g better health care for everybody immediately. You know what the scary thing is? If you came into my house and you said that enough times, eventually I'd get worn down. I said, "Okay, go ahead, fuck my life." <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's what happens in Washington. It's like, it's like you know, if he gets, God forbid, if he gets reelected. Uh, oh, there you have. You know, I I, but you know, it, sometimes people just push things for so long that you know, it ends up just happening because they don't give up. I, you know, what I want to know because this guy's attention span is known to not be very good. Okay, for instance, you can't give him anything unless it's on one page in big print and is simple. Okay, he doesn't, and he doesn't want to sit in a, in a meeting too long if he has to. So my question is, how long is it going to be before he is just tired of this? He's bored with being president. And I'm saying, <laughs> it I'm, I'm saying it's already in, process, in progress. Yeah, I think he is bored. Yeah. He's bored, but he's also too stubborn to admit defeat in anything. Well, it isn't a question of defeat. I think it's just he doesn't really want to be president. No. You know, he, this, is, this is not his idea of a good time. Why should he work this hard? Is I think what he's thinking hey, about wait, right wait. now. He said that. He I don't blame said that him. A few weeks ago, he didn't think he was going to have to work this hard. He was very surprised. It's the first thing he said that makes sense. Why would you want that job? I mean, really, I he's got anyone. a great life. The guy has jets. He's got beautiful places. He's got a life that he was living. Why would he want this? A well, maybe maybe to get away from the tax uh, problems. And uh, not get get in trouble with the IRS for that. Maybe so Melania won't leave him. Maybe those are the reasons because he wants to be president. What? Yeah, Maybe there's the reason. Patriot. Because he's a patriot. Yes, a I, patriot. yes, he he. What a great patriot this guy is. What has he ever fucking done for this country prior to being president? Well, what has he, he done? Come on. He's a huge birth in a lot. What? Uh, he's voiced his opinion. He, uh, no, 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 no. That's easy. That's easy. That's easy, Phil. What has he done? When has he done something that he's appreciably been, tried to citizen. make this country a better place? Lee, Lee is right. He's been a citizen. So all have I. No, no. I'm saying we're all citizens. That doesn't mean we all get to be president. Yes, but he ran and he won. No, no. But I'm saying to you, what has he ever done to benefit this country? You, you know, can't. You're not naming he's something, done Phil. A number of things that I know of uh, from a philanthropic point of view. Phil but he was a philanthropic. What is philanthropic? Is that some kind of a bad leg or something? What is that? <laughs> yeah, he, he made things easier for businesses to destroy the environment and make more money. Right. So and then in 9/11, he stole a lot of money that was uh, that was supposed to be donated to uh, to uh, to victims' families and to and to uh, yeah, I'm the sure first he responders. And he, he stole the money. Yeah, he stole it. He probably spent it on drugs. This guy gave more money to first responders than just about anybody. Oh, I've really? Ever. How much? How come uh, he I, well, I know that he paid off uh, uh, two mortgages for the cops that got assassinated in Brooklyn. Well, that, that, that's two uh, mortgages. That that's, half a million. that's two mortgages. And oh, that's for I two cops. That. Who cares about the cops? Well, I care about the oh, cops. Oh, I don't. And uh, he's very active with the Stephen Stiller Foundation, uh, Gary Sinise, and and I uh, heard I heard that they they're still waiting five million dollar fraud settlement. Uh, uh, I, and I heard I heard that the Stephen Stiller group uh, has said that uh, actually Trump hasn't done much for them. Well, he was instrumental in the uh, in in the uh, donation that paid off the. Uh, uh, the, the what do you mean he was book? instrumental? What does that mean exactly? He was the major donor, and it was anonymous. Except I have. Well, to how much was it? Half a million dollars. Uh huh. And you uh -huh. happen to know it was anonymous, yes. but you happen. To you know. you happen How's to that? know. Yeah. How do you know that's true? How do you know that's true? 
because I'm involved with the Stephen Stiller Foundation. So fuck you. You don't know the Stephen Stiller Foundation outside of the fact that you belong to the Stephen Stiller Foundation. No, it's not a matter of belonging. I'm instrumental in a number of the things that go on and the monies oh, that get well, donated through the company. How much have you donated? Uh, about $700. But uh, our company has donated uh, over a million dollars. And, uh, and you know, we have a 1,000 stores throughout U.S., Canada, and Australia. Well, wait a minute. See, these aren't your stores. N no, I'm, I'm on the board. Uh, of what? Uh, of, um, I'm the uh, regional network manager uh, for CCA Global Partners, partnership with Carpet One. So, in other words, it's, it's a carpet organization that you are part of, but yes. it's not something you own. Uh, no, I own I own a share of it. You own a, you own a company. Well, no, I own a share of that company. Everybody that owns one yes, of these companies. Yes, but what I'm saying is you own you have a carpet company, and it, your carpet co company owns a share of this organization. Co-op. Yes. Yeah. So, how many and, are there? Uh, well, there's a thousand stores, and there's 365. See, a thousand stores, stores, and 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 they all uh, got together and got a million dollars. If you divide a million by a thousand, what do you get? I don't know, but you know, uh, what? <laughs> uh, we 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 don't. We had fundraisers. We donate. We install the carpet and provide the flooring for. Uh, so far, it's been 39 smart houses that we give uh, absolutely free to returing veterans that have lost two, uh, three or four of their limbs. Uh, the Stephen Stiller Foundation. Is there a limit? I mean, if you only lose one limb, you don't get a house. No. Uh, well, that's kind of so, that's kind of chintzy of you. I think losing anything in a war, uh, including your mind, probably should warrant a free families, rug at listen, least. These families uh, are are put in a very difficult position, having to care for. Uh, and why the were they put in that difficult position, Phil? It doesn't matter why. This oh, is yes, it does. Yes, it does, Phil. Yeah. Oh, no, no, listen, it does listen, matter. It is. It, it, what matters is that these people are, need to live a normal life. We build these houses so that they are specifically built for they're each. They're never going to live a normal future. life because their government that loves them so wonderfully picked them up, put them somewhere else in the line of fire oh, where they lost you, these limbs and then brought them back and didn't do shit I for them. I tell you, uh, Patrick's life, for instance, would be a lot easier if he had a shower that he could just roll into and uh, and he wouldn't have to worry about getting in and out of a chair. These houses are set up so that, it, let's say, the wheelchair uh, the, has a sensor in it and the doors open and close as the wheelchair Phil, approaches we're not talking about technology here. What we're talking about, we let's get back to where we started. Right. Well, uh, you still have haven't told me you still haven't I'm told smart. me what Donald Trump ever did for his country. He didn't take military service. He got out of the military during Vietnam. So he didn't serve. I served. I served. I'm a Vietnam vet. Okay? Uh, I mean, I'd have been had, had bullets shot at me, but I'm a Vietnam vet. What was he? Beats me. A coward. A fucking the, coward who used. Who, what, what did he? What did he? What did? What did this coward use, Rob, to get out of the military? Do you remember what was it? A bad foot. It was a bad foot or something, yeah, or a spur foot, on his yeah. foot or something. Oh, yeah, Patrick. You know, Patrick first. Spurs, I think. Spurs. What he has done for the country, I will say just fine. He has provided jobs for any number of people. So if you want to get down to brass tech and technicality, that is an actual thing that he's yes, done. Yes, but a lot of those people have complained they didn't get paid. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, the point is you're asking what has he done, and he has done that. I don't, I don't know if, Patrick, well, in, in, in deference to you, and I, I pre appreciate your opinion, as opposed to the guy next to you, uh, I, I um, uh, just because a guy does something like hire people because it's in his own best interest because he's not going to get those buildings built unless he hires people to do it. And by the way, most of his projects were mobbed up. If you want to want to know the truth, uh, because that's the only way you get stuff built in New York City anyway. Uh, but uh, this was a guy who, yeah, got people jobs, but because it benefited him. If he, if it didn't get people jobs, he wasn't going to go out of his way and do it, you know. You know, he took a chance and he took risk. And what uh, and, risk? Uh, 
What risk? You risk when you build a building or you t or you open up a business, you take risk. You hire people; they don't have the risk that you have. And uh, no. so he took Ooh. risk. You know, here's my here's how I feel about that. The fact well, is that if you that if you're a businessman and you're you know a, a, and and you want to make money, then you take that risk. And if you fail at it, boo fucking who you tried. But okay. What about the work of taking a risk, working for a company. Say if you lose your job. That kind of could work both ways, Phil. You, you lose your job, you get another one. You lose your company. You, you wait a minute. You lose your job, you get another one. Oh, I wish. Easy. Is it that you easy? Oh, why like am I sitting here every night playing radio when I could actually go out and get a real radio job? Well, all you'd have to do is apply. You know. Oh, all God. I have to do is apply. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, at my age, what do you think my chances are of getting a job in radio? Uh, probably pretty good. <laughs> not. Not. What did you say, Rob? Not very high. Alex, you, you may not get the position that you want or the money that uh, you want. You'll get something. Can no, something? Phil, you don't understand. First of all, Phil, you don't understand shit. Ray, Ray, wait a minute. Ray, and then Rob. I, gotta check I just wanted to say, I mean, if you think that getting a job in the entertainment industry is a matter of just going out and applying, that you have no clue. You gotta, you gotta send tapes. You gotta, you know, you gotta talk to. You gotta network. You gotta. Uh, I networked my ass off, Phil. I networked my ass off, and you know what came in the way between me and 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 uh, getting a job? Seventy-seven years. Well, that's you know, what became hey, between look, me and getting I a almost, job. I almost had a position for you, and you know the guy died, just like you were telling. Uh, uh, what's his name? No, we, um, that that only went to the first level. It never went to another level. But yes, a guy you introduced me to, who knew who I was at KGO in San Francisco, dropped dead of a heart attack. That's yeah. the well, that's Alex. the Bennett curse. Yes, Lee. Okay. Oh, Donald Trump has proven that any man can make it in America with a little right. hard work, a two hundred dollar million dollar inheritance, and wonderfully lenient bankruptcy laws. Yes, exactly, <laughs> Lee. <laughs> exactly. Yes, uh, oh, yes, or, Pat, uh, be, Anthony. Oh, I don't want to. I got to check on my mother, Chris. She's a little upset. Well, we can't see you anyway, so go check on her. I'm going to log off, though. Is that okay? You're going to log gonna off? Check. Okay, if you want to log off, I'll log see you off. Okay, I'll, bye. I can have night. So he, he he's threatened to call tomorrow night. It won't be a won't be a Tony free night. So. Yeah, you know, uh, I have something here. Yeah, I, I, I looked up Donald Trump's uh, philanthropy. He's given uh, five million dollars of his own money in the last twenty five years, and he claims to be worth ten billion dollars, which is five cents for every hundred dollars that he's uh, worth. A lot and of and that's the, according to his own information. Well, a lot of what he's given was given uh, anonymously. Phil, Phil, anonymously or not his anonymously. His own money. His own money. His own money, they say. Five, uh, five million well, out of the $10 Trump billion Trump he supposedly owns? Anonymously. You know? Hmm? Say again. What's wrong uh, well, with the phrase, it, Donald Trump donated money anonymously? How does I that phrase you, work? I happen to have been privy to some information that I just oh, gave oh, you. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you did really you are, Phil. Just, uh, did you just belay confidential information? Yes, I did. <laughs> but, I, but uh, you know, uh, it's okay if it comes from me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not against the law of the president. <laughs> That's right. Here, here comes Brian. Uh, wait a minute. Let me I think put him in there. This money was from some other, yeah, from these other uh, things that he had nothing to do with. It wasn't his own money, according to this thing, but, you know, whatever. That's true. Might he does enjoy putting his name on other people's stuff. On other people's money? You mean, you mean is, wasn't it his foundation that spent the money on yeah. his portrait? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah spent, uh, he spent $20 million dollars to buy a portrait. Of you know, uh, when my kids were in school... Oh, they uh, they would they would auction off things that the kids made a bench made out of tiles that the kids painted and so forth, and some of the parents, not me, spent two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars on one of these benches. Uh, why? Because the money they got the bench, but the money went. Phil, to Phil, come on! He bought he bought a picture of himself to put up in Mar-a-Lago that was a horrible painting to begin with, and it cost twenty million, twenty what twenty thousand dollars, and that came out of the foundation's money. Right, but what what received no, that no, money it, it, was a charity. <clears throat> Most likely, it was a charity, you, you, just you, like you, the school you, system. Why, can, why, this is a man who is riddled with faults. Why can't you say he is, but he's the best thing we got right now, and use that as your excuse? Well, I, I like him. 
You know, I, I don't. I, think I, I can't believe fools. this, Phil. I, you're a smarter person than that. I can't imagine you're that stupid. Uh, I, you know, I'll. Well, I'll be, I guess uh, I am. Yeah. I like Bernie Sanders, but I'm not one. Uh, but I'm always one to uh, criticize the fact that towards the uh, run up to the uh, general election, that Bernie Sanders is guilty of having gaslighted for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, he no. got screwed by Hillary Clinton. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Brian, can you turn your camera on? Oh, well, here we go again on this shit. Well, if, if you can't, <laughs> then don't worry about it. But, you know. Yeah, I keep clicking it on and off. There you are. There we go. You know, Podesta and, and, and the whole thing it was a setup. They, you know, they, they did. And, and with these, uh, what was the uh, delegates, the special delegates? Uh, they 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 had the screw for uh, Bernie Sanders from the very beginning, and nobody is upset. Nobody hey, sees. Nobody that. is sitting here think, sa it's saying we love Hillary. Okay. I, I think that was. Awesome. And I don't think it was the screws for Bernie as much as it was everybody felt it was Hillary's time. Yeah, but they made sure Bernie didn't get the time. They, they I agree. Made sure. I agree. I, I agree. Do you know both. what's interesting about Bernie Sanders? Is he's going around the country making speeches and gigantic crowd show up for him oh yeah to this day you would think Huge. you would think after the election was over he'd go over in his corner and hillary go in her corner and trump would be president and he no he's still out there giving speeches and people by droves they're selling out arenas well alex there was I a facebook a job. man that i liked i just wanted to say real quick there was a facebook man that i liked on that uh, not long after the general election results and said that uh, you notice how in the meme it said in meme it said you'll notice how after the election um, Bernie Sanders has been continuing to crusade and beginning and, and continuing to deliver yeah. speeches and yeah. continuing to gather support whereas Hillary Clinton much like a thief has snuck away in the night and yeah uh, Jeff you had your hand up fraud as yeah, far as I'm, I'm always uh, surprised at the same thing that that uh, he is willing to continuously help the Democrats, even though he isn't one. Yeah, well, I mean, he had he, he he well, he caucused with them because uh, you know he, their, their philosophy is closer to what he believes than uh, uh, you know than uh, what, well, what he may start the Democratic version of the Tea Party. Mm -hmm. He could. Uh, there already is one. I thought the Coffee Party. I thought really. Well, that's the first I've heard of it. That's kind of cute, never actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's the thing with with the Tupperware party. I, I would hate to see uh, the Democrats have a Tea Party, just because it's very divisive. You know, then you're taking what the, the what you've got, you're chopping it up some more. It's already and, been divisive. And the fact that Hillary very divisive played right funny now. games to get to get one up over uh, Bernie Sanders and people of his uh, persuasion. Of his ideology, let me the, be, the division was there to begin with. All, we're just, let me, let me, all I would be doing would be just identifying. Well, it, let me just say, it. let me just say this: Who do you think, okay, would have been that Donald Trump would have rather gone up against Hillary, Hillary or Bernie absolutely. or Bernie? Hillary, definitely. I don't think yeah, Bernie would have played to any anything but the East and the West Coast. Uh, you know, he only plays, uh, he certainly wouldn't have played to the states that uh, Trump won. And Donald Trump does? The New York Code? Fantastic. Well, he's not a socialist, you know, yeah. and. Uh, he's and, just an opportunist. Just, but he's a New York, a flashy New York yeah. businessman. You think he plays well? That I mean, I think uh, people are looking for something different. And change, and that's the reason why he got in. Lee, and it would have been Jewish? the same on the other side, I think. Yes, no, he Bernie is. wasn't. He, Bernie's, was he Bernie Jew Jewish? Bernie's Jewish, yes, he but yes, he's he more is. atheist than he is. That's Jewish. another strike against him. Well, he's more atheist than he is Jewish. Actually, that don't matter. Uh, Lee, let me come um, look at Lee. Old, Lee. No offense, yeah. I think one of the reasons why Hillary lost is because we've had the first black president ever, and that's a big deal. And we will have the first female president ever. But I don't think we're evolved enough as a society to accept one right after the other. Mm. And that's just a yeah. sad truth. Well, I, Hillary was flawed. I agree with well, yeah. well, well, Hillary was flawed, but let's, let's remember again. And, you know, you say, well, Donald won. And, yes, I agree, Phil. Donald won. He won the, the Electoral College. But he was beaten by Hillary by over 3 million votes. Now, well, it, it's why you have the Electoral College. So no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. states get a voice. No. 
it, it, when it comes to a, 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 a election like that, it should be the total number of votes and who wins the total number of so, votes. So rewrite the constitution. It, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a small state or a big state. The fact is that you know it, it should be I'm like my vote isn't worth shit. Because well, Brian you know. has a has a has a story for you. Brian will tell you, you know, go have another uh, uh, continental Congress and rewrite the rewrite the Constitution. Well, anyway, the point but I'm making. It, listen, listen, now. listen. If Trump had lost, if Trump had won by three million, but lost by the Electoral College, you'd be sitting here bitching like a little baby. Okay. It it's happened before. And it's going to continue to happen. It, and it happens always to a Democrat. Sentence. It always happens to a Democrat. And it always, it, yeah, yeah. But the, the and and it's always been dis and it's always been somewhat in dispute. You've got to you got to remember the whole Gore thing was the only reason Gore didn't become president is because Gore finally said, "Look, enough of this. The country's in turmoil." No, it wasn't just the Supreme Court. He just gave up on it. And uh, you know, because how many hanging chads can you find? But there was more than just Bush and Gore and Trump that uh, that uh, won the Electoral College but didn't win the vote. Who was the other one? Was two it Johnson? Two other times. Uh, uh, two other times. Yeah, two other times. And, and yeah. what were their party affiliations? Uh, I, I can't remember. I just remember last time I was on here, we talked about this, and I looked it up, and there were two other times. <laughs> there was a contentious election for the first time when uh, Nixon ran against Kennedy. He, uh, yeah, Kennedy he, only won by 200 in six yeah. years, so more popular. But he did win. He did win by more popular votes. However, and then there's the Rutherford B. Hayes controversy. He okay. actually lost the electoral vote, but there were there was some wheeling and dealing done there, where it, so that he could become the president regardless. Did, uh, did there were have, actually uh, was he a member right. of any kind of party? Uh, you know what Hayes's party might have been. I want to say it was. I. I, I there were actually it was Republican. Yes. Yeah. So how come oh, the Republicans back in like the 1800s? Yeah. yeah, but how come the Republicans always win when this kind of thing happens? Because we're winners. But this was not long after the legacy <laughs> of Lincoln, so it was a different Republican party. At the Actually, time. there were there were five. There five, were five. five. It happened five times. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we got them there. Identifying those. Uh, I've said before on Jack Bishop's program, it would be yeah. a, a, a conciliatory compromise. Would be uh, having each county be counted rather than each gerrymandered congressional district. Yeah, but anyway, Ray, what do you see there as the five? Well, uh, 1824, John Quincy Adams. Mm -hmm. 1876, Rutherford B. Hayes. 1888, Benjamin Harrison. And then 2000, George Bush, of course. And then 2016, Donald Trump. Yeah. So. Okay, so five out of 45. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the point I'm making here is is that, that – uh, it 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 still is, she she can walk away saying you know she had the popular vote she had the heart of the country okay no, she had the coast of no the country. she had she, she had the heart of the country you know she had look three million people is a lot of fucking people yeah you know? how many people voted how many people voted three million um, more how many than didn't vote which would be twenty four so one hundred forty five million. Uh, Slightly uh, less than half, I think, was the uh, was the final count of the electorate that showed up. I don't know. Okay. Like so 48. I, I is anybody? Can you look that up quickly, Ray? How many people voted in the last election? He's, oh, he's yeah, sure. he, he thinks it's going to make things better. Three hundred thirty million people in the United States now. All right, correct. Yeah. So that would be yes. slightly less than half. Half is like uh, fifty-seven point six million people, or twenty-eight point five percent of estimated eligible voters voted for Republican and Democratic presidential primaries. Uh, this is the primary. By the way, that's pathetic. Yeah. May I say? Well, there's yeah, also percent. another nail in the coffin for that. As be the uh, like in my state here, unlike California. I don't know what New York is, but you have to be a member of either the Crips or Blood, Democratic or Republican, in order to, you know, vote in the primary election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you have to register one way or the other. You don't have you know, to be I, one, but you can just say you are. Closed said, primary, yeah. closed-minded uh, primary I, election. I system. said early on in the election that uh, young people don't come out and vote, and I was uh, berated on that by uh, a, a listener uh, that uh, didn't agree with that. Oh, no, the young people come out and vote. If if they did, Trump would not have gotten elected. Uh, Patrick, and, are you still there? Hold on a second. Patrick, Patrick, are you still there? I'll give you that. 
I just can't turn the uh, camera on. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Just jump I in like anytime you want to. I think it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, boy. It's just, so, you know, you know, you had Bernie. You had all that youth vote. They didn't come out and vote. Uh, mm -hmm. Hillary. Hillary okay, didn't get pick them up. Hillary, Bernie tried to give it to them, but Hillary didn't appeal to them and didn't pick up that vote. And that's Bernie's fault because he tried and, gaslighting for Hillary. And, then, and, and Howard we Dean... We saw through it. it. Yeah, but Howard Dean did the same thing. He had a youth vote, and, yeah, he uh, you know, he blew it, but... Uh, he yeah, but he, he blew it during the primaries. He didn't even yeah. get to the presidency. So, so, did, the, so, did, uh, so did Bernie. You know, Bernie. Bernie didn't. You know, well, Bernie uh, saw it through to the end of the primary. Bernie, he, Dean, after okay. Iowa. Let, or after let, let's let's be honest about one thing about Bernie. Yeah, Bernie would have done better if he had, if he if he had the money that Hillary had. Hillary had just a shitload of money. He had good money. I mean, he was he was getting the benefit of that uptick that he had, but mm -hmm. he didn't have the money Hillary did. Hillary so literally closer. bought the nomination. It was cleaner, though it was cleaner and more honest money, being that it was from individual con contributors rather than dark corporate money. That uh, yeah, but I'm still know. saying that you know when you're running for president, uh, although you know I think Trump kind of went against that. I think Trump probably spent less, less money than anybody ever spent the to primary, win the president. Well, money. even when he ran for president, I think he wound mm -hmm. up spending less. Than any candidate well, yeah. in in, uh, in recent Hillary history. Else than him. Yeah. yeah, she had way more money than he did. Yeah. yeah. Is it true that Bernie has a bought a Ferrari? Uh, that, I I saw I saw that on the. So on the so news. so what? Why I is that? Know. I don't care. The man's seventy four years old. If he wants a Ferrari, the yeah. Fuck, what, so, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> what what, what, is, what, just what does that uh, mean? You know, is that supposed to demean poor, him? He's not a poor person. I mean, you know. Well, he's a senator. He, 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 he makes a lot of money. Listen, yeah. look, look, I have some friends who are, are big lefties who live up in Vermont. And we got to talking about Bernie. And they know Bernie. They've done business with Bernie. They don't like Bernie. Really? <laughs> they don't like him. Uh, they don't like him because he said, as a businessman, he was, he was not the nicest kind of business the guy to do business with and so on. Um, so went to Trump University? Huh? Did he go to Trump yeah, University? Yeah, went to Trump University. So, you know, I mean, th there are people who will say bad things about Bernie Sanders. And I don't think Bernie Sanders is 100% uh, creditable. Uh, but on the other no, hand, yes. he did speak. Uh, what he was speaking made a lot of sense to people. Mm -hmm. It made mm -hmm. a lot of sense to people who feel that there should be some kind of justice here that the almighty dollar shouldn't depend on whether you live or die in this country, that you, whether you get an education or not shouldn't be based on whether you got the money to get that education. Uh, he was speaking about a lot of things that are just good for a, a just and honorable society, which we'd like to think we have here in the United States. And uh, he, he tapped into that. But unfortunately, he also got, uh, he got, he got punked by, uh, by Hillary. Rob? So you got about eight minutes left here. I, has anybody seen the news about the Montana special congressional election? Yes, I heard about tonight? that on the radio on the way no, here. No, no. What? But tell us. <laughs> so um, Repo the Republican candidate was being asked a question by the Guardian, a reporter from mm. the Guardian, mm -hmm. about health care, about what's what's going to happen with health care. Well, this. This congressional, uh, his name is Greg uh, Gianforte, allegedly body slammed the reporter. He did. Broke his glasses. Not, a, not alleged. It's on video. And it's, yeah, well, I, 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 saw, video I heard the, the radio. audio. I heard the, audio. I heard the audio of it. This guy just went bonkers and just grabbed the guy and body slammed him, broke his glasses, and now the police are getting involved. Then he tried to, and to him and his staff tried to intimidate the reporter, saying, "Get the hell out of here!" And I'm yeah. saying, "No, I'll call the police. This is pub this is public property. I'm allowed to be here if I want if I want to be." And by the way, you so, broke my glasses. Oh. And body slammed me. Wow! <laughs> and and uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I saw that story before Back we went on the air tonight. Uh, look, I'm not going to hold against the Republicans every bad action that a Republican does, but there seem to be an awful lot of them lately. You know. I, I guess they may lose that seat, huh? <laughs> well, Probably you don't would. you don't know. You don't know. I mean, this is Mo that's Montana. Yeah. 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 
What's scary is the electorate saw, might want to body slam a reporter occasionally. I, I the heard the word with this is the problem with this is it's bigger than just the incident. It it goes back to starts at the top when you got the president of the United States saying that the that that the media is the enemy. Mm-hmm. And it's and uh, I was listening to CNN tonight. Yeah, I was listening to Don Lemon on CNN tonight, and he was he was saying that he's been threatened and his family has been threatened. Just asking questions. Uh, uh, Patrick, are you Patrick? Are you still there? Hold hold on a second, Phil. Uh, Patrick, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Anything you want to say about this? Since we can't see you, raise your hand, and you're always very good about that. Um. No, I did the first that I had heard about it, so I was just sitting back and, and enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> that shit. It's entertaining. Uh, Ameri- Sad, entertaining. Yeah, Sad. yeah. American politics is, uh, we're in a bad way. I think we're really in a bad way, and I know Phil's going to say, oh, you're just all doom and gloom, you know. But I mean, and I don't have to give a shit because hell, I'll be dead one of these days. You know, I'm not. I'm an older guy. Uh, how much is, am I going to be hurt by any of this? You know, I'll, I'll probably be gone before it could really hurt me. But I'm worried about some of you people, and I'm worried about a lot of our uh, younger listeners, if we have any, who are going to be affected by what's being done right now in Washington D.C. Uh, yes, Phil. Well, you know, uh, the media matters and George Soros, they yeah. say, is behind the firing and the loss of uh, of advertisers at Fox for Bill O'Reilly. And now they're going after Sean Hannity. And whether you like Sean Hannity or not, this is uh, a concerted effort to uh, to take a person's free speech away. And uh, and and well, uh, uh, as, some, as someone whose career may have been uh, harmed somewhat by George Soros and by Media Matters, uh, I'm no great lover of Media Matters or George Soros. So don't think you're saying something that's going to bother me. I think they're both I, they're both it's an asshole group and he's a fucking shithead. But it's working, and what they're doing is they're uh, well. Taking I don't the, believe in that. See, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in boycotts. I don't believe in shit like that. I, I understand. I, I, that's what's going on right now, and yeah. that's why the Fox uh, network no, is being no. The Fox down. network is being assaulted because you had its head going ahead and getting blowjobs in the bathroom from women he was going to hire, and then that was slowly followed by Bill O'Reilly thinking that well, if the boss does it, why not me? And then all of a sudden you've got the You've got a whole bunch of people coming forward and saying that was a bad situation to work in. Well, let me finish. It was a bad situation to work in. George Soros couldn't bring that about. Yes, but Hannity uh, isn't being accused of having. Oh, yes, he is. But he's being accused of some sexism. He's being accused of a lot of shit. Oh, no shit. This is no. When did this happen? It's been happening for the last couple of weeks. I mean, Hannity's hanging on by a bare thread. Yeah. And he's the only thing in prime time they've got left that hasn't left them. You know, he's had two I women leave, Trump. and he's had uh, he's had to fire. They've had to fire one of them, Bill O'Reilly, and then they got Tucker Carlson. And uh, I used to work with Tucker. You know, I mean, we I used to do a show on Friday afternoons over at MSNBC, um, and I I like him enough. He was very good to me, but you know, he's kind of a lightweight, if you want my opinion. You know, so what what the hell? You know, but I mean. The fact is, yeah, I, I imagine that George Soros is uh, it, it does that kind of stuff, and I don't like that kind of thing. I think that uh, simply get, getting sponsors to boycott is not the right thing to do. It's not uh, uh, the right thing to do is to bring up the, the stuff that goes wrong and let the sponsors decide for themselves whether they want to advertise in that atmosphere. Now that they've had a few successes, I think they're going to continue and they're going to and they're going to go after uh, everyone they can. No, they've been doing this for years and they've had a lot of successes yeah. over the years. On both sides. Yeah. And so. failures. And yeah. and failures as well. So you know you can't you know I just I I think it's time Fox News had a good had a good run. Yeah. It's time. It's, it's just over. Right. And I don't think they're going to be replaced by anybody in particular. I think that all the all those news networks are going to kind of flatline and spread the goods over everybody. Well, they'll um, get the Trump News Network in there. Uh, Trump News Network. Well, that's not going to happen now. Hey, Lee, thank you so much for joining us. We love having you here. You should call more often. 
Uh, All right, I'll do my best. Yes, please. Phil Meyer, thank you so much for keeping it crispy. Uh, <laughs> Patrick, yes. good night. And tomorrow night, call uh, if you uh, don't. If you're going to go to the bathroom, don't put up your sign. Yes, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, John Rockwell, thank you very much for your call tonight. Rob, as always, great. Jeff, wisdom personified. Ray, we love having you here. You gotta call more now that you're available. I, I will. I'm going to. Okay, yeah. please. And Brian okay. Ludwig, uh, we'll probably see you on the next show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks well, everybody. Mike. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good night. Exactly. Okay, everybody. Mm -hmm. That's it for tonight. Uh, next is the uh, the intersection with Jack and Amy, uh, and they will be followed at uh, one o'clock in the morning by uh, Connections, which comes uh, from Florida, oddly enough. Anyway, uh, uh, we're going to have to get out of here now and make way for them. And so I will just say that I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night.